Good morning. Good morning. God bless you, everyone. Come on and join us. This is Dr. Danita, your host for today's Disability in the Church Live. We have some important words for you today. We have the wisest woman that I know is sitting right up here <laughs> on this platform. So come on and share with us. Again, I'm Dr. Danita Edwards. I am the founder of Birthright Kingdom Deliverance Ministries. And we share with you, Lord willing, every Saturday morning, 10 a.m. Eastern time, rain or shine. Our desire is just to present a love and support platform. We use godly principles biblical accounts, and firsthand testimonies as we talk about faith and disability. And again, our disclaimer is we do not offer any medical or therapeutic advice. This is for enjoyment and encouragement. So come on and join us this morning. We have the lovely and vivacious Frida Ali with us. We're going to go ahead and pray, and then we're going to introduce her officially, and she's going to encourage our hearts with a great message that the Lord has been just stirring up with her today, how to include disabled adults in the community. Pray with me this morning. Lord, we just thank you, God, for your uh, divine hand upon us today. God, we thank you, Lord, for your direction. God, we thank you, Lord, for clarity. And we thank you, Lord, that you're filling us with understanding. Lord, we thank you for uh, Sister Frida coming on the line today, God, that she might encourage and inspire someone, God, that they would look again at the resources that you are giving through her. We ask you to bless our time together and bless those who have questions and concerns that our hearts would be stirred. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. amen. And we do have Miss Frida. You might hear me call her Alfreda. You might hear me call her my bus, my build-up sister. She is an educator. Uh, she studies the word of God, just comes with so much experience, so much expertise working with our young people. And um, she's just going to share with us what she has found to not only be some real challenges, but she is also going to highlight some of the strengths and some of the resources that we can use, whether it's in church, work, school, or other organizations. Uh, come on, sister. Look, I said sister now. <laughs> come on, Frida. Uh, introduce yourself to our audience today. Good morning, afternoon to everyone. My name is Elfrida Ali, and it is a pleasure to be here. Now, she said wisest, not wisest, <laughs> but I do have something I would like to share. I'll tell you a little bit about me. I am a mom of a wonderful girl who is the mom of my wonderful granddaughter. And she and her family live in Raleigh. I'm an educator. And that's what I'm going to I'm going to come to you from an educator point of view. I've been teaching for over 24 years and I have been in an inclusion classroom and I just have different observations that I have made. So I'm just going to talk to you, you all about some observations and just see if we can put some thought into how we carry ourselves, how we see other people, because we have to do that as believers of Christ. Very good. Excellent. Excellent. And so just to let you know, uh, everybody, that this is a pre-recorded uh, episode. We are so glad you joined with us today. And uh, we're just be believing that this is going to be something that really nourishes your heart and your mind and your spirit. So Frida, we have you know, different people that join from different states and uh, different abilities. For those who might not know, could you share just real quickly about what is an inclusion classroom for those who might not know? So an inclusion classroom is where years ago they used to say that they needed to bring children in. Um, they had a classroom where they were called self-contained. So all the children that may have had different types of disabilities, or they may have had one type, but they all were in the same room. So mm -hmm. before we said we, they, we wanted to mainstream them into general education. Mm -hmm. However, today it is known as a, an inclusion classroom. So when you walk into a classroom or you were to come in and make an observation, you may not know whom you're looking at. 
I see. Okay. That's the um, setting for an inclusion. The base word being include. So mm -hmm. everybody's included. I see. But everybody's not included out in our community. All right. Well, since you jump right in, share with us, you know, some of your observations from being in those inclusion classrooms. So one of my base questions is how do we include or how can we include disabled students or adults into our community? And the base of our community is not school. It's, it's churches, it's work, it's school and other organizations. So I was talking with a colleague of mine and we were, we were just having a discussion. And so just jotted down some things I wanted to bring to light that, that I, you know, of course, in my opinion, I pray that they will help someone. One of the things is what we called an asylum attitude. Mm, and the asylum attitude is the belief that a person with a cognitive or physical disability should be sheltered away from society mm -hmm. due to their physical or uh, intellectual limitations. A long time ago, if a person had a child and it wasn't quote unquote uh, normal or up to society's expectations, they sheltered them away. Yes. That's not what we do today, but we do it not in a physical place, but we do it in our thinking. So let me try to dig into that. I do understand what you're talking about. There was a time in our history when they would actually put children or adults away uh, because, you know, they, they didn't know what to do with them. And so they Correct. would put them in asylums. I see what you're saying. So sometimes you say that even now, even though they're physically not in an asylum, you said we still do that in our minds by putting them away. What, what do you What do you mean by we we put them away in our minds? We make a uh, judgment. So Judge. I see. Now, now I move from the asylum. It's it's that bigotry of low expectations in the church because we talked about the church. When we have these attitudes, they showcase their disability and not their ability. So in the church now and sometimes. Uh, well, back then, I should say, and, and even now, if they have a cognitive disability or mm, somewhat of a physical, we might in the church say, oh, that's a demonic spirit. Okay. Yeah, we, we don't want to recognize that things happen in the process of being born, DNA. We have ancestors that we um, don't know anything about. Okay. But in the church, we will just relegate that to a demonic spirit. I see. It's got to be prayed away. Well, we have to realize some things are in the natural and God has allowed some things in the natural for us to learn from. So if we relegate everything to demonic, okay. then we will miss a blessing that a person could be in our lives yes. because we relegated that right. because, hey, you know, they got, it's got to be prayed out of them and okay. some things just who that person is. So again, I said the at their attitude showcases the person's disability and not their ability. The next place is work. So you know, adults are listening, but we have uh, young adults. We have adults that are about to retire and everything. But when you see, uh, we see it on our commercials when they show the um, one of the centers is here in Virginia where we live, where they give the people with disabilities or jobs or when I go into restaurants or different places I notice they give those people and you notice I said those people because again judgment in our mind asylum attitude they give them menial tasks yes and they don't challenge them so yes. they get menial tasks based on sometimes just because their behavior is quirky yes uh, we know there are children who have and adults who are on the spectrum and some of them are geniuses, but because we don't have enough information or don't seek to know this person as a person, right. we'll, in our workplaces, we'll give them the menial task. Yes. And it's just based on a disability without ever challenging them to rise up or yes. to do more. So now we go to my workplace, which is school. So again, it's in an inclusion setting that I see the children come on. Some of them are... They're right on it, right on it. They can have the conversations. Okay. They can be in, have the jokes, but they have that teacher, some of the teachers that will not call on them because they get the information. We get the information that tells us who this child is 
okay. supposed to be. Okay. Not saying that the disability is not real. It is a real thing. Right. However, when I'm in my classroom, every, I use a, a system where I put all the names in the basket and whoever I call, it, you know, oh. answers the question. That's good. And it may not be the smartest kid in the, but you know, they say, well, this would be the smartest kid. Okay. It may be the kid who doesn't talk. Last year, I had a, a student who came in and was a self-directed mute. And the kids would say, well, you know, he don't talk. He know he doesn't talk. Mm -hmm. But the more I talked to him, the more he talked to me. Okay. Okay. So I could have just went on. Well, he's not talking. I'm not going to call on him. He's not going to say anything. She's not going to say anything. So no, I already know. Who, I already know who you are. Awesome. I don't know who you are. And we have to come out of that mindset that just because the person isn't doing what quote unquote, the society deems as normal, okay. that they have talents and they have gifts mm -hmm. that are beyond anything we can imagine. Now, let me ask you a question about that. Now, I know from personal experience that it takes a little bit more ingenuity, like in the inclusion class, it takes a little bit more patience. It takes a little bit more um, techniques, strategies. Do you think that possibly our teachers are not um, trained, you know, sufficiently trained maybe to handle these different situations? Or do you think it's just the lack of uh, compassion to do it? In your observation, do you think it's the training? Do you think it's the pers personality of the teach? What, what are your thoughts on that? So I, what I don't want to do is because teachers get a whole lot of what they don't do. Okay. So I'm going to go back to the church, okay, to the workplace, I see, to school, and it's not a lack of training okay. because we are trained very well. Okay. However, but it's at work, church, school, and then I got one more place I want to visit. Okay. It's because we have this asylum or this judgment in our heads. Okay. They may say, and I don't know anybody named Little Johnny, but that's my little right. name. They right. may say, well, you know, he's different. Johnette, she's different. No, okay. don't invite her because in those other settings, church and work, they make me feel uncomfortable. Uh, okay. So I have to do the reaching. Okay. So okay. instead of me doing that, I don't want to, I, I don't want to put myself out. So I'm not going to say it's teachers because the teachers know that they have to, we know that we have to um, be, I mean, we have to come up with different strategies okay. to include all of our students. So that's, that's not going to be a thing I, I, I'll jump on because it's the whole community. One of my other places that I wanted to, you know, just highlight that I don't see students or students or children for the lack of a better word is other organizations such okay. as the Greek organizations oh or, my goodness or I, I I never not saying that they're not there right I, I've never seen them okay. again with that attitude of can they do the um any of the social organizations do they allow mm. students with disabilities that's wow that's good young adults have they ever thought about it when I, my daughter, um, she is, um, uh, belongs to one of the Greek organizations. So that's my experience with that. Also going to college, I saw, I didn't see it. I see. So my time is going back to say, is it a thought? Is it a process that, hey, little Johnny wants to jump, join, but he doesn't look like me. Right. She doesn't look like me. She's kind of slow and we got precision. We know you've seen the shows their precision and different things mm -hmm. however again if you do not allow this person to showcase their ability you Ill concentrate on their disability i see okay. so uh, i haven't seen any of them any of the college clubs now what i've seen is they start their own things that is like, true. that is true they start their own because you know they get if they're very um, on the spectrum and they are very smart, they may be called nerds or whatever. Mm -hmm. However, they're just people that don't think the way we think. Right. It this doesn't is mean 
Go ahead. Go ahead. I, no, I just said this, this really is making sense as you're talking about the different organizations. I'm looking around in my mind and trying to see where would I see it, you know, and I haven't. You're right. Go ahead. I have no Well, that's what I said. We have to realize, <clears throat> excuse me, we have to realize that it's a community. Yeah. It's, the school is not the community. The church is not the community. We're, it's, a, it's a whole a community as a whole, if that makes any sense. It does. So then we'll go to our parents because yeah. that's what I come in tact with. Pa the parents must accept and respect the differences that the children have. Mm -hmm. I have come into um, situations where I have one um, parent, some parents say, well, my other child is not this way. And so they treat the child with a disability uh, differently. Yes. And yes. that child has come in, you know, what's going on? How do you feel? Well, this happened, that happened. Well, why? Because I couldn't move fast enough. Okay. I didn't answer fast enough. Okay. And, and and when you speak to the parent, well, you know, no, I expect this child to do, to do the exact same thing. My other baby that's in college mm -hmm. or my other young, he doesn't work that way. Okay. Even when you have children that are what society deems as everybody's on the same level. Okay. All children are different. Right. None of them are the same. Okay. So you get to know that person based on their personality and you treat them. That person based on their personality, the okay. same way we would do for our friends. So yeah. we have to know parents have to accept that all the children are different. And if you have one with a disability, you have to know that God has put you in a place mm -hmm. because he feels like you can handle this. So that's what I told one of my parents once. I said, you have been chosen mm -hmm. to do this because right. God knows you can do this. Right. So no need to cry over spilled milk because mm -hmm. this one is yours. Right. So we have to just remember that these are people. Mm -hmm. They're not disabilities right right they are people who feel who hurt who who want love who want to be touched all the things they want all the things so my last thing that i'm gonna say unless you have questions no go ahead i'll go ahead is the um two things not the last when society only looks for the best they excludes those who those that are not the best okay there's an exclusion factor when you okay. look for the best because sometimes your best isn't going to come the way you think it's going to come. Mm. Um, there was a movie once that I watched called I Am Sam. Very good movie okay. uh, with Sean Penn. And it was about the, the man who had a disability. Okay. But he was a very good worker. Okay. And he ended up being a very good parent as well. Okay. With a little help from his friends. So what we have to realize that when we look for the best, then we exclude um, those who are not. Ah. Now, the last thing I will say <laughs> is uh, Matthew 25, 40. Uh, when we go up to 39, it says, Jesus said, now the people are asking Jesus, when did I do these things for you? Mm -hmm. When did I clothe you? When did I feed you? And he says, when you do it unto the least of these, okay. you do it also unto me. So I just want to leave everybody with the thought of mm -hmm. the packages may not always come in a neatly wrapped bow, but the gift is inside. Okay. Okay. So thank you for having me on. Yeah. There's a lot of information, a lot of good stuff. And I want to say to uh, Frida, especially for our parents, that um, support groups are needed. You know, sometimes if you don't know how to reach your child or you don't know, you know, the expectations or you don't know the, uh, you know, just, just you don't know what your child can do. And and you, you know, you just don't know, you know, you, you're not sleeping at night. You, there's some help out there for you. There's some help out there for you. So let me ask you, uh, Frida, do you know, I'm just thinking like Google, I'm thinking looking up support groups, you know, for a specific ability. Do you know any support groups or any organizations that would help possibly our parents? 
I, I, I don't have any in mind, okay. and I do apologize for that, no, but no, I would no, say okay. um, to parents that um, let your child, let your young adult mm -hmm. um, be just that. Um, we, Girl Scouts, Boy Scouts. Uh, yes. Um, they learn from different people. Yes. And the things that you can't teach them, yes. other people can teach them, and they learn better from their peers. Yes. Anyway. Yeah. So with that being said, dance, music, whatever they show an interest in, exactly. allow your student, your young adult, your son or daughter to participate. Yes. Because they're not, it may take them some time to, handle their instrument to get their movement and their feet together doesn't yes. mean they can't do it it yes. just takes time okay. and so as you're saying um the support groups they are out there for parents mm -hmm. uh, in different places in the country because i know different people uh, watch yes just get out there and look go to the school counselors and ask okay. if you're um person is a young working person ask the workers do you all have any type of uh, mm -hmm. assistance any programs yes. to get the children started in furthering their education exactly wow so yeah. again i apologize that i don't have any no no um, no no you're fine i just i just figured you know you might have something under your belt but no that is that is that is fine and as a parent with a a daughter who has a, a unique ability you know, Google has been one of my best friends because in the beginning, I wasn't ready for support groups. So we didn't start, we, I joined a support group, but I never wanted to be part of the, um, the disability community. And so I, I didn't, we didn't participate, you know. So can I ask you a question? Yeah, go ahead. Was that because, and this is another one of our community things, was yeah. it? in this kind of personal, but was it a shame based? Yes. And, 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 and that's why that parent comes and they think that you got to be like everybody else. Yes. That's exactly. And, yeah. and it's good. You alluded to that because it's there. It's not that it's not there. Right. And you won't, and the parents won't go. Right. Because, well, they don't want to bring it up, but they want to, they want to, you know, just have that heavy burden mm -hmm. when they really don't have to have the heavy yeah. burden. Because everybody has some. Yeah, yeah. And I, it is so true. And I'm, I'm kind of glad I did it the way that I did it. You know, not going to the support groups in the beginning. Because once I matured, I really look back and see now what, uh, what my daughter was missing and what I was missing from those type of support groups. So I like that I didn't do it then, but now I can share from both sides of mm -hmm. coin and say this is what happened and I missed out on this but now that I'm involved because now my daughter is in several groups you know we're busy doing different things and I always tell people to try to find your son or your daughter's niche find what it is that makes them smile and just congratulate them you know they want to be congratulated they want to see you know that you're happy about it and you know what? I'm not even gonna get into that, but I was so tied up in me, 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 you know, uh, that I couldn't get to her, her, her until I started growing a little bit. So I understand, and I want to just end on this note: my little boy, who, <clears throat> who, excuse me, was a self-directed <clears throat> mute. Yes. When at, we asked him, he was going on to another grade, but it was all about me, and he said he wanted to be a teacher. Okay. So my thought was, now you got to talk to be a teacher. Yes, yes. So, and his mom and his dad, they were very happy when he started talking. So, um, you know, you just got to, you just got to throw them in there with the rest yeah. of the kids. Just yeah. put them all in and, you know, treat them the same. Yeah, 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 yeah. In our churches, in yeah. our schools, yeah. in our other organizations, and yeah. at work. Okay, all right. One in our community. Good, good, good. All right. Well, we will definitely end on that note today. And I think that that was good. Uh, really just, um, you know, making sure our folks are involved in some things because, you know, I hear some not good stories about, you know, 
people not letting their children out, <laughs> you know, and I'm like, you got to let them, you know, you won't be there forever. You know, right. You you got to build a community around them. You got to get them their social skills. You got to help them, you know, with that. And don't anticipate failure. That's a big thing. Don't anticipate failure. So uh, again, I remember I said the oh, bigotry of low yeah. expectations. Yeah. And look, oh, let me ask you, since you said that, uh, Frida, do you have your, your I think your five categories, can you just blurt, blurt, blurt? Do you have them in front of you? If not, I can go back and. Oh, no, no, no. I have okay, them. They are the churches, okay, work, school, or well, it's really only four, okay. and other organizations. Other organizations. Other social ah, organizations. Social other organizations. Social organizations. Wonderful, mm -hmm. wonderful. Okay. All right. Well, my friend, we want to thank you for sharing with us today. And I'm believing that. Uh, those who have been following disability in the church, some people follow us on Facebook. Some people watch the replay on YouTube. We are on uh, Twitter. We're on LinkedIn. And uh, I am really believing some parent is going to see this and it's going to be an eye opener for them. Amen. I am really believing that. So I'm going to ask you if it's okay. I hadn't asked you earlier, um, but would you like to pray us out? If not, I can do that. <laughs> okay, I, did, I didn't ask you earlier. So I just want to let everybody know. So before Frida prays for us, just to let you know that every Sunday at 6 p.m. Eastern time, we do have what we call Bible talk. All you have to do is message me. I will send you a Zoom link. Now, Bible talk is for those of us who have unique challenges and we are talking about love and relationships. And it has been awesome. I know Salathia is probably out here now watching the replay because he comes every week. We're taking the Bible slowly. So if you, if you're a caregiver or you have a unique ability, a unique challenge, we want you to join us. We meet right. Sundays at 6 p.m. Eastern time. Now, disability in the church, which is what we're on now, this platform, we meet Saturdays at 10 a.m. Eastern time. I started another group. <laughs> I started another group this week. It's called the Author's Pen. And that's for uh, people who are authors. But we'll talk more about that a little bit later on. I think those are my announcements. <laughs> okay. All right. Well, Miss uh, Frida, can you pray us out? And I just want to thank you for joining us. I mean, we've got to get you out here again. We got to get you out here again. You just got, <laughs> look, you got some good stuff and we, we don't want you to stop now. We want to keep going. We want to hear some more. <laughs> all right, Father, we just thank you for this time that you've given to us. We just, first of all, thank you for this platform that you've opened up. We just ask you to continue to bless Dr. Danita and that she will walk worthy of the calling that you have put on her. Lord God, we also lift up every person that's listening. We ask in the name of Jesus that you would just open their hearts and minds, that you would direct them, Lord, and that they would begin to see people in a different light. And Lord God, let them remember that in Matthew, you said that when you've done these things to the least of them, you've done them for me. And that we will all give an account on how we treat each other. It's in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. 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 Well, praise the Lord. All right. So last thing we're going to say for uh, today is if there is someone who would like to um, sow a seed into not only Disability in the Church Live, but specifically into Miss Frida. So I put my cash app, I put my PayPal in there. And if you want to get a seed, because we believe that Frida is good ground. We believe the word says, as long as there is seed time, and harvest is always going to come. So we're going to ask you if you would like to, to sow into us. All right. Well, thank and you. I'm, oh, go ahead. I'm, and I'm going to say anything that comes to me, I would like to sow it back to you. Okay. Okay. All right. Thank you, Frida. So I would definitely, definitely, definitely reach out to you. So thank you everybody for joining us. We have love being with you guys today. I'm Dr. Danita Edwards, and this is Miss. Frida Ali, and we are speaking to you from the platform Disability in the Church Live, and God bless you. We'll see you on next time.